Dan Lagan Maggle. Well, did Michael Cole like it? Because tonight on SmackDown, he got molested. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling for your top five moments from SmackDown, August 5th, 2002. I believe it was August 5th. It was August 1st, mate. So before we get into it, let's correct them on the date. The only thing that could have made the Cole segment better is it was in the coal mine. Imagine Midia jumped through the top rope through the coal mine. And there was no escape for him. Aye. She's yanking on the tie, and Michael Cole stuck there. Face pressed up against the coal mine. It would have been great. I what? felt a bit sorry for Cole. I mean, Taz was loving life. Switch the genders a bit. I wonder what Cole's wife was thinking about it. God damn it. I don't know why I was doing a Vince McMahon impersonation for Cole's wife. But I, bet you, I bet you McMahon was backstage loving this. Where is McMahon? Oh, he's, well, he's hired two competent G well, one competent GM and his daughter-in-law, so... His daughter-in-law, his daughter. Well, daughter. Daughter, I don't know. My daughter, mate. Uh, but we have to kick off with moment number five. There was a few honourable mentions. Uh, you want to go through the honourable mentions? Honourable mentions aren't going to get on, uh, aren't going to get honoured uh, in this video. Are they not? Fuck it. Alright, uh, there was, okay, like, Devon first Rikishi wasn't a good match, but there was one point where... Devon's face kind of got stuck in Rikishi's ass and he couldn't escape because Rikishi's legs were pinned against Devon's shoulders. It was a good moment and Taz was laughing his ass off, so yeah. It was alright for what it was, wasn't it? Yeah, we also got Eric Bischoff getting kicked out after he realised that the main event was featuring his two top stars from Raw, Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit, so two pretty good moments there. But moving in to number five. We had this big backstage walk around that featured everybody. You'd Brock Lesnar, you'd Hulk Hogan, you'd Kurt Angle, you'd Billy and Chuck. For some reason, you had Rico. But this was very special because it was done in one take and it's very unique. I've never really seen much like this in wrestling. It was like a big seven minute backstage promo, but it featured, well, maybe not seven minutes, that's maybe an exaggeration, but it was like four or five minutes. But featuring like so many multiple guys, so you had Brock Lesnar walking up with Heyman, he walks up to Hogan, tells Hogan, I want you to win tonight, brother, I want to be facing you next week. And then Brock Lesnar is walking off, we see Billy and Chuck arguing in the background, Rico, then you see is coming down the hall while Billy and Chuck's arguing and he like runs, he, he like pulls into the side and, and makes sure he hugs the wall to avoid Brock Lesnar and then you see Brock Lesnar walking past into the distance. You've got Rico trying to stop Billy and Chuck for arguing. They're saying, well, what's the point of us being on SmackDown if there's no tag team titles? Then Chuck says to Billy, what's the point of us being a tag team? Which pisses Billy off. And he's like, you only used me, Chuck. And then they kind of walk off. Meanwhile, this is happening and you've got John Cena lurking from behind the door. He's just peeking his head out, looking at Billy and Chuck arguing. So you would lots of things like happening in the background, but there's like multiple things going on at the same time and I like that. Then Cena confronts Rico, makes fun of his style. Rico then says, well, look at you, your haircut, your, your neon blue attire. I could make fun of you for an hour. He goes to slap Cena. Cena grabs him, goes to slap Rico, but Rico just shits his pants and, and John Cena hesitates and pulls back the hand. You can't see me. So there you go, Rico was embarrassed and then we see Rico run off with his, his, his shit pants and he runs into Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle tells him, get out of here loser. Wolverine. Uh, so Kurt Angle is basically machismo here on Rico and then Kurt Angle walks up to Brock and we have Brock saying, hey Kurt. I'm the new number one guy. I hope you win. So it's me and you next week. So yeah, with lots of stuff here. Hogan, Brock, Cena, Rico, Billy, Chuck, Cena. A lot of guys just in the one cut segment. The camera was following everyone around. I liked this. It wasn't like we went from the one half, one side of the locker room to the other. We kind of did, but we did it in the one camera cut. Which was very good. What I liked about it is it was a sink or swim. Because if you botched, you botched. And I like one takes. It makes it feel more legit. And it does. It makes you feel like it's a proper backstage segment. Today, they would never do this. All you get today is the wee ring set up with that Samantha Irwin, is it, in the corner? Or some, some other interviewer. Just talking bloody garbage, man. This was good. I loved this. More of it, please. And it gives Cena and other people like Brock time. Mic time. My time. Moving into number four with Eric, Eric Bischoff time. Eric Bischoff is buying some tickets. He is on SmackDown in his front row because he went up to somebody. He bought a shit ticket. 
He then walked through the crowd, he walked up to somebody in the front row and bought their good ticket in exchange for his shit ticket. So Obviously this is a plant, but imagine it wasn't a plant. Like, no, Eric, I want this seat, big man. Wrestling was so good back then, you'd probably turn down $300. See, now, I would I would accept the money, but I would never be front row to begin with, so I wouldn't have. I'd be in the arena to begin with. <laughs> You're lucky if I'm sitting at home watching. Uh, but yeah, so this was good. Eric Bischoff buying his ticket so he could get a front row seat and watch the SmackDown action. Number three, we had the big main event. Which was between... Rock, Edge, and the newly debuting SmackDown superstars, Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero. You weren't a fan of this I didn't match? like this. I thought it was shit, and in fact, it was shit. It wasn't a good match at all, Eric. Uh, Bishop, Benoit and Eddie Guerrero are born as fuck. There you go. I say that they're both dead and I don't give a fuck, right? Good technical, re good technical wrestlers, but born as fuck. They would never make an all-time great. Eddie Guerrero might have had more charisma than Benoit. He might be a better talker than Benoit. I'm not denying it. But even Eddie Guerrero, he's not. He's not. He's not top tier. No, he's, he's top he's tier. He's not top tier when it comes to wrestling, and he's not top tier when it comes to character or promo work. I, At least Benoit, you can argue, is top tier technical wise. I think when it comes to wrestling, Guerrero is. Uh, I, the, the, what is the the kids say these days? Mid. I would say Guerrero is mid in terms of wrestling. I believe. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say he's mid. No, I would. Mid? Nah, no, mid's a... Take that bag. He's not fucking mid. No, he is mid. So what, you think he's like a 5, 6 out of 10 for wrestling? I don't think he's all that good. Honestly, I don't. I'd say he's more like an 8. I, I'd say... No, I would say in WCW, he was a lot better. But I think this run, up to his death, I, I was never impressed by Guerrero. Nah, I, think, I think we should edit that out, man. So you think Guerrero's a mid-tier wrestler? In terms of wrestling ability, yes. Nah, I think, I think Guerrero's a very good wrestler. I just don't think he's... One of the well, best. Who, right, name me someone who's. Well, I'll name you. I'll name you a few people who's better than Guerrero. Who I, I, would, I think Christian's better than Guerrero. No, I can, I can, I can name a shitload of people. I'm not saying I can't name people better than Guerrero. Yeah, I, just, I, 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 just, I think Christian's a bit of a. As, as a performer, I would say Christian is a bit mid. Nah, that's harsh. No, Christian's underrated. I'm not buying that either. All right, fuck. All right. Point. We buried Guerrero a couple of weeks back, and then Ben was getting it now. So Ben was clear of Guerrero. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Anyway, yeah, let's let's move on. I, I don't think this main event should have been here. I like the ending. The Rock right? taps it while looking at Brock Lesnar. It's weird. I didn't I didn't like the ending, but I liked like Hogan coming out and hitting Brock. But the Rock tapping it, the Ben War shouldn't be happening. It shouldn't be happening. Right, let's move on to number two. This was the best thing on the show, hands down. It should have been number one, but unfortunately, one of us is shit taste, so it's only good enough to make number two. But yeah, like I've said. Nidia, pure molesting Michael Cole, getting on top of Michael Cole, basically rubbing herself all over Michael Cole's face. Jamie Noble saying that you people are all trash and that he is now the man because he's a cruiserweight champion, but he's looked down on him because they used to be trash. And he says, you want to see trash? Well, you're going to get trash. He says that Michael Cole, the commentary team, doesn't say favourable things about him and Nidia. He says Taz is an okay guy because Taz can whip his ass but he doesn't like Michael Cole he said he's going to sweeten Michael Cole up he knows Michael Cole has the eyes for Nidia so he's going to give Michael Cole a little present today he's going to let him have a go of his girlfriend and in return he wants Michael Cole to start saying good things about Jamie Noble and this is like I mean I'm not even joking Nidia literally climbs on top of the table mounts Michael Cole starts kissing him full tongue down the throat and then I mean literally at this point Pulls her tits out and just rubs Michael Cole's face all over them. Probably, arguably, one of the most sexual things I think I've ever seen in wrestling. Yeah, hands down. And you know what? Never actually knew it happened. Now, we can say there was live sex celebration. And, I mean, and you can say that Sable had the handprints and stuff and all this stuff. And there was bikini contests. There was this and there was that. But I think this might actually be the most, like, full-on thing we've seen. Because it was legit almost real. I mean, I say it almost real. It fucking was real. It was real to me, damn it. Yeah, but... This is it just, might be even better. It's was... on a man, though. If this, right, say this was Vince McMahon forcing himself on... Uh, well, I know he did it numerous times, but to this extent... Right? Well, no, but the thing... Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying, but still, even if... I think even if the ro gender roles were reversed back then... And maybe it wasn't made a deal of then. I think it would be getting made a deal of now. That's what I'm saying. This would be getting brought up now. Just like when they bring up Trish Barkin. Oh, that was terrible. How did that happen? 
Yeah. But realistically, why is this not getting brought up? Because it's, it's Niddy on Cole. Now, if this was Cole and Niddy... Oh, my God, Mara. Th this episode of SmackDown, would, they'd probably cut it from the fucking the network. Hey, Peacock, you, you better edit that five-minute segment out. <laughs> anyway... It's just, it's just Jamie Noble standing talking to himself. Well, two fakings or something. Oh, damn, Chris Benoit treatment. Anyway, no, I thought it was a great segment and didn't even know what happened. And what, what made it better was just Taz pure pissing himself the entire time. <laughs> and you can't help Taz feel, sitting there though with sunglasses. I on. mean, you can't help feel this is a rib. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Cole's turned up at the arena and he said, ah, "I've had an argument with my wife or something like this." <laughs> and McMahon's booked this on the fly. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. No, that's, that's probably what happened. Cole's having problems at home. McMahon's like, ah, I'll fucking, I'll mess this wee bastard up. <laughs> Fuck him. Anyway, I, mean, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Be surprised me if Cole didn't know about it. No, it's like GR getting traded to fucking SmackDown in 2008. Yeah. Crazy. Number one. Lesnar versus Mark Henry. That, that, I mean, this, this four-minute match is better than anything we've seen in New Japan. I don't give a shit what Meltzer says. Two big boys fucking going at it. Oh, see that overhead belly-to-belly -belly suplex that Lesnar hit on Henry? That was a thing of beauty. And it shouldn't even be possible how he legitimately just, like, threw Henry over the top of his head. And it wasn't like, like, see, if you told me he was going to do this, I'd be thinking, oh, fuck, I don't want to watch this. Henry's going to land on his neck. Yeah. But he got him up and over with ease. I mean, absolutely insane. I think when it comes to, like, wrestling and throwing suplexes, I would say probably Lesnar is the best at it. Now, even though Angle's a suplex machine, I just don't think Angle would have been able to do this to Henry. With Taz, he's a human suplex machine. Do you think Taz would have got... No. No, I'm not buying it. Like. Taz's wee chihuahua legs would have fucking snapped in two. But Lesnar is a fucking beast, and he, yeah, he just threw Henry over his head. Then the F5, the impact of the F5, like, it was great. Literally just, boom. I thought the ring was going to explode. Planted middle of the ring, and Brock Lesnar is victorious over Mark Henry. Something Kurt Angle couldn't do last week. Damn, no. No, I know Lesnar screwed him, but, but still. Angle didn't interfere, though. He kept it. So, clean. you know, we're getting a lot of this. We're getting, obviously, last week we had Angle, Henry. This week it's Lesnar takes on Henry. But it's, this all, week, it's, all, it's all Brock and Angle. This week we're getting Angle and Hogan. But next week it's going to be Lesnar versus Hogan. Is there something going on here where Lesnar's just better than Angle? I'm going to do what you can't do. I could be. I think that's what the problem Could he beat going. Henry when Angle well, could? Well, I guess Angle and Hogan were going for the who gets the right to face Brock. Aye, but Angle didn't win, and I think Brock is going to win. And Brock, yeah, Brock, so I think on SmackDown, Brock fucking kills Hulkamania. I think on SmackDown, what we've got going at the moment is Brock Lesnar's doing what Cat Angle can't. Aye, pr pretty much. And that's what I'm a fan of, Big Brock. Anyway, good top five moments, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Till then, peace.